welcome to Parent Well, where we share stories as parents and children to help us build strong families and communities. My name is Uma, and I'm the host of Parent Well. My guest today is my dear friend Diana from our Toastmasters Club. She is an artist and a docent and has truly opened my eyes to enjoying art more deeply. Obviously, we love talking about encouraging creativity in children. Enjoy. Hey, Diana. Good morning, Uma. How are you? Good. Um, thank you so much for joining me in this episode of Parent Will, and especially for suggesting this topic, encouraging creativity in children. It's such a wonderful topic. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. My yeah. pleasure. Of course, you know, creativity is um, just so important. We need a lot of creative people to solve a lot of uh, world problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. And, and I think we all have creativity to us in many different ways. It doesn't have to be music or art. It could be anything. It could be just solving problems. Exactly. Uh, that's why it's so important for children to be encouraged and supported when they're growing up in their mm -hmm. creativity, whatever it is. And I think paying attention to what that child, where their interests are to expand on those, but also introducing them to things that they would not otherwise be introduced to. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. You are an artist. I'm just curious at what age you might have realized that uh, you have a you have creativity or you're a creative person and I was wondering if um, your parents were creative people and how they might have instilled creativity in you yeah my it's interesting my mom was definitely my greatest fan it was a very young age that I found I really enjoyed creating things in terms of, for instance, I remember having a huge uh, quantity of pennies and I took the pennies and I would put them on the floor, carpeted floor, and I would draw things using the pennies, forming shapes with those. And I can remember doing that at a very young age. So I think kids have a tendency to really create because it's freedom creativity when they're little. They're able to do whatever they want. They're able to express themselves whatever they want. If they want to cry someplace or scream someplace, they do it. And it's so natural. It's just instinctive creativity. So I think an important thing is to not hinder that creativity and to, to encourage it and to be able to support it. When my daughter was little, she was young. Uh, I remember I would I would do different things. For instance, in the kitchen, there was one cabinet that was her cabinet. Uh -huh. It had paints, it had Play-Doh in it, it had even kitchen utensils and that sort of thing. Anything she could play with, paper, finger paints. And she always knew to go to that cabinet. Now, naturally, I put locks on cabinets that may have had any chemicals in them, but she really never went into any of the other cabinets having that one. Uh, another thing I would do, I, I had one blank wall, one entire wall in my kitchen was blank, it was empty. And I would tape a roll of paper, unroll it and tape it up from one end to the other. Sometimes I would trace her body if her friends came over, trace them and let them paint and let them color and let them fill it in. Other times I would just leave blank paper over there and she could do whatever she wanted with it. That's so a I cool idea. Friends. It was a lot of fun. And and then we didn't have all the toys. Mendo is 40 years old. So we didn't have a lot of the toys. We certainly didn't have the technology that we have today. And growing up in a, with parents that also fostered creativity, my mom was very talented in many ways, but I think the greatest gift she gave to me was supporting me and encouraging me and being my biggest fan. No matter what I did, it was wonderful. If a delivery person came to the house, she would show them my painting hanging on the wall next to the door. <laughs> so she was really supportive. My dad was musically inclined. He played several instruments. So there was music around the house all the time, but I, I have to say, I never, uh, inherited his gift 
or talent for music at all. I, I had no, no talent and no interest in that either. So it was definitely art. In fact, my parents actually started taking art lessons much later in life. My huh? father studied Sumi painting when he was in his late seventies. And my uh, mom took Can some you painting. tell me what Sumi painting is? Oh, Sumi E is a Japanese, now, I'm a little confused because I've heard it said that it was Chinese, but uh, recently I read that it was Japanese. It's an ink painting and it involves pressure and control with a brush and sweeping lines. And I'm sure you've seen it. I'm sure many people have. It is, you'll see a lot of bamboo, fish. It's oh, just like beautiful. And the key thing to that is the pressure and the control. And that's much what it is when you're drawing, if you're doing photorealistic drawing, it's about the pressure and the control of the pencil, which is really a skill and an exercise that has to be practiced and developed. Wow. And I was fortunate to have some very good teachers oh, along the cool. way. Yeah. I'm sorry for interrupting. I know oh, you were no, telling please. me about your mom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And mom started painting when she was in her, I think, late 60s. And she took some oil painting classes and did several landscape paintings. And surprisingly, they came out, not surprisingly because it was her, but just surprisingly for such early works, they, they really were quite nice. And so that was, that was something that I really appreciated from my parents, that they were able to, particularly my mom, really be supportive and encouraging in what I did when it came to arts. They paid for art lessons. They bought the supplies. It was never a problem there. We also did other things because there's quite a generation difference between my daughter, myself, and certainly my granddaughter. Mm -hmm. And when I grew up, we had an egg man that delivered eggs. And my mom would take out a big bowl and put them in. We had a milkman that left glass bottled milk next to the house and delivered milk. There were, there were so many differences at that time. And it was real cow's milk. We didn't have almond milk and all types of nut milk and everything. It was just plain cow's milk. I think maybe there was an option for skin milk. Uh, there was the egg man. There was a chicken man that came and my mother would order from the butcher, order from the chickens. And it's funny, things have come full circle because now so many people are ordering food as mm -hmm. opposed to even going to the grocery store. But those were things that they did because my mom didn't drive. And occasionally we'd go to a chicken market. And I grew up in one of the boroughs of New York, Staten Island. So it wasn't that I was in a remote rural area, although the other boroughs might say, yes, Staten Island was pretty rural. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and just the differences of my childhood to my daughter's. But one thing that we had in common, and I've done it with my granddaughter too, is to take household objects. Fortunately, <clears throat> excuse me, we can Google that nowadays and get on and say, okay, what activities, what things can we make for our children and grandchildren? I can remember my dad, we would take empty rolled oat containers, cardboard containers. Oh yeah. And we would play drums on those and we would keep ourselves occupied. And there were all sorts of homemade activities. There were exercises. There were things where you had to imitate different animals and how they walked and that sort of thing. And it was very creative and encouraged creativity. And these were free things that would keep us occupied. That's what I'm realizing from everything you just said, um, that creativity is really almost everywhere. We just have to uh, engage <laughs> and uh, yes. and do oh. it and it literally costs pennies <laughs> if that like I, lo I love your idea of uh, creating you know shapes and designs with just pennies oh that was a lot of fun I, I can remember <laughs> that vividly to this day other things when my granddaughter came over and to visit I thought I'll google and see what toys and things I can make and one thing, I have a tissue box and the lid comes off so you can put the box of tissues All in right. it. And I let her use that and I found a deck of cards and she was able to just put those cards in it. And at a year and a half old, she was maybe a year and three months at that time, she was able to put the cards in it and that kept her entertained. Another thing was to take an empty cardboard tissue box, poke holes in the bottom of it, and then take straws 
and let her put the straws in those holes. <laughs> and I can't tell you how long that kept her occupied to do that. Something else I remember when and I was- And I'm sure up. it also helped uh, uh, build her uh, visual spatial skills, like really improve her visual spatial skills. Absolutely. Yeah. And that hand-eye coordination. And the, uh, yeah, exactly. Of getting that in. Uh, one thing that I used to do when I was younger, also when I was little, my mother, God bless her, had patience and uh, allowing us to do that. But my brother and I, we would take sheets and cover the tables or maybe tip a chair upside down and we'd build tents out of these sheets. Mm -hmm. Now, how I don't, I'm not so sure that uh, I would I would allow all the sheets taken out of the closet and tent building in my house at this point. <laughs> but my mom did have a lot of patience and she she tolerated that. And we had the most fun just building these tents and climbing in and out of them. So it's interesting. I think creativity and, and you're putting yourself into it as a parent, which is really important to show the child that you're giving them that attention, mm -hmm. which may not have any effect on them then it may be something that has an effect on them years down the road too as so many other things do when they grow up right uh right. another thing i took a cookie sheet for my granddaughter a metal cookie sheet and i taped spoons plastic spoons to the back of it and just the taking on and off of these spoons with the tape kids love playing with tape i can remember buying scotch tape for my daughter and allowing her to play with the scotch tape and just tear it up and why not they enjoy that it's a lot of fun it's not that kate tape has to be used just for a package or just to seal something mm -hmm. So there's so you know, one thing I've been saying is um, that I would not give any electronic gifts to my grandson, who is who is less than two months old right now. <laughs> but yeah. I, I just keep saying that I, I was just clearly um, there are so many um, creative, um, very inexpensive ways of uh, entertaining kids and helping them um, learn and grow and encourage creativity in them. But I'm just wondering what your thoughts are about the electronic toys. <laughs> I agree with you on that, Uma, and for many on many levels. I don't think it's healthy for them physically. I think there's an energy that's emitted from these electronic games that's dangerous. Uh, I'd like to know what people like the head of Facebook and uh, people that are very successful, how many of them are actually allowing their children to play on electronic games? I That's think interesting. I, I think I did um, see a new segment a while ago and uh, some of the, uh, some of the uh, tech people who work in those companies, they actually don't, um, want their kids on the electronics oh. too much anyway or maybe not at all yeah yeah i recently watched a video and it's a very famous football player and i apologize because i know nothing about sports other than this gentleman is probably one of the oldest i believe is a quarterback and his wife was a model and i would highly recommend that they eat healthy. I believe the electronic use was limited to maybe one half hour per week. Yeah. It could have been per evening, but I think it was per week that the kids and what they do is they have three children and they send them out to play. They have a lot of property and I'm not even sure if they go to public school or not. The children, some might be too young for that, but they're outdoors playing and they're outdoors creating. And I just was so impressed with that. I thought that was fabulous. And it's certainly a great example. They eat totally organic or the majority is organic. Uh, very little meat they eat. Maybe 10% of their entire diet of that is, is meat or maybe it's only a few times a week. So if I say probably one of the most famous current football players as a quarterback, his wife was a Brazilian model, Tom Brady, that's his name. I'm not oh, sure if you're allowed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> mentioned names on a video that's going to be on YouTube, but I was so impressed with him and his wife and what they're doing with their children. I would highly recommend that. I hope Deanna inspired you to come up with a few ideas to encourage creativity in your own children. In the next episode, I talk to my friend Rajeshwari about family meals and routines. Be sure to join us at the dining table. 
please feel free to leave your comments below. If you like this video, please click like, subscribe, and share. If you are similarly interested in sharing your stories on Parentwell, please email us at ourparentwill at gmail.com. Thank you.